I was born in Singleton. I'm from the Wanarua Nation. I'm part of the Perry family, Perry clan around, around Singleton. Being my land and my elders' land, I take it on as a personal responsibility to do whatever I can to take care of the place. With the cool burns, it's a responsibility that's been taken care of over a long amount of time. And just starting to get it back and breathe it back into our everyday way of land management, which is great. Go back to our smoking ceremonies and the importance of when you're working on country, especially if it's for a cultural reason, how important it is to just give yourself that rinse, that clean, to come in fresh and new. You'd leave whatever energy that you have behind you and you'd come in with fresh new energy. In my opinion, it's a responsibility and a necessity to bring it back and keep it going for the land, for our mother, to replenish itself, which in turn replenishes us and keeps us keeps the circle moving keep things keeps things going around uh, when i think about my relationship to fire i i think about a song that came to me and that song i sing in Wiradjuri language and it's uh, it's entitled win nanagunurumbang which means fire for that country And the song goes on to say, uh, fire for animals, fire for the river, fire for the trees, uh, fire for the rain, fire for everything. And Win Nanagun Nurumbang means fire for that country. We're just about nine kilometres outside of Meriwa on a travelling stock reserve. It's a parcel of land that holds these beautiful white box gum trees and they're part of a rare ecological community and land services are looking at trying to increase the biodiversity of this, uh, of this country here and having cultural burning be a part of that process. Local land services is conducting this cultural burn as part of its national land care program. Box gum grassy woodland is a critically endangered vegetation community. Most of the remnants of box gum woodland are only about less than 5% of the original extent and there's only about 1% of that would be in good condition or nearing what it would have been pre-European settlement. The majority of the species that you find in this woodland are in the grass, the understories part. There's normally a few dominant tree species that you find in um, box gum, which is normally white box, yellow box, Blakey's red gum, grey box, uh, currajong. Today's burn is what we would term a reset burn because country is not in its traditionally natural state. We have such a mix of both native and introduced species. So cultural burning aims to not only look after the box gums themselves, but to hopefully sort out the weeds from the, the natives. We're hoping to stimulate a native seed bank, uh, allow room and space for other natives to, to come back. Those natives species of um, understory for this particular system and hopefully uh, to regenerate them and, and see them reappear in the landscape. There is a lot to cultural burning, there's a, a lot to take in but essentially if I boiled it right down it, when I'm often asked the, the difference say between hazard reduction and cultural burning what is the difference? Well with cultural burning first and foremost it is a cultural practice that's a fundamental difference as opposed to being a management tool such as a hazard reduction and in the way that it's applied, it's applied in a way that it is not introducing too much fire at once. Spot ignitions, for example, just singular point, uh, letting them burn out in 360 degrees, using the traditional practices. And that really is about taking your time. It's about doing it in a gentle and methodical approach. This is about reintroducing a cultural practice that was carried out um, right across Australia for thousands of years. And this country has not had that for anything up to 200 plus years. So this is about starting that process back up, if you like. I think there's a big future in cultural burning. I think farmers um, and land managers are generally very interested and really want to understand what the benefits to land management could be and whether that's something that they might adopt in the future in their land management practices. But besides that, just to gain a better appreciation of box gum grassy woodland, 
on their property and whether there might be areas that they could work as a conservation plot and have that as a private conservation area on their property but also just to improve the condition of the box gum woodland generally since most of it's on private property we're relying on farmers to you know have an interest in preserving the woodland. It seems to be very effective what it's taken away is the dead grass above and leaving all the undergrowth to re-come back. When they're doing something like this, if it grows into bigger stuff, well, they've just got to get consulted with all the farmers, I suppose, and just see where it travels from there. We can start to regenerate the land through using a traditional practice. And that's what I would like to think will, will happen in the future. There'll be more of this and it'll be embraced by landholders and that they will see the value in it. I think it's just starting the conversation, really. You learn all the time, you know. You pick up something every day from someone. Um, in that, in my respect anyway. And you always can learn something from it, can't you? I've really enjoyed being out here today, just observing the people doing the burn has been fascinating. And also I'm hoping that it'll improve the condition of this woodland and maybe I'd be really excited if after, in six months time, we find there's some um, new species that come in here that weren't here before.